So given this knowledge of possibility of using e UML to, to capture inheritance relationship or generalization, as well as simple association between classes, simply having a one class access another class by via storing perhaps the uh, uh, object reference of some kind. Uh, what I would like to try today is that if you jump to the to the schedule and uh, if you jump to the to actually to the very bottom of our uh, home page, okay at the very bottom there are a couple of links to design patterns and these are some things that I would like to uh, to, to start using in our presentations because uh, my challenge is that besides just talking about UML and diagrams and, and other things, I would like to look at the code and stay practical in terms of uh, you know, looking at some, some uh, samples. So there are different design, uh, actually let me open perhaps a presentation. Uh, no, actually this was a presentation, okay. All right, so, um, uh, what uh, we can look at is that uh, uh, a set of patterns in our in our course uh, uh, right here. Um, uh, in specifically, uh, we will have a chance to talk about creational patterns because those are the uh, design patterns responsible for um, uh, constructing things in in our software. Uh, structural patterns, which simply um, uh, formalized relationship between different uh, different classes and which can be very practical when we build uh, software at different you know different different levels and also behavioral which perhaps specify a typical behavior you know relationship uh, during interaction between between different classes so we will cover uh, this, uh, this set of patterns by the end of the semester. Today I will just go with the first pattern, um, uh, uh, creational pattern, um, and uh, we'll basically try to look at the code and try to analyze. But my focus will be not so much on the actual pattern uh, idea, uh, uh, although we will briefly talk about it, but mostly I would like to uh, use um, a class diagram to reconstruct the structure that this design pattern presents with actually a surprising number, number of classes. And uh, you know, essentially stay on the path of uh, reconstructing UML from already existing software so that you have a very practical demonstration of what UML looks like for already existing, uh, existing design pattern uh, software uh, demonstration uh, project like we have. That's one thing. A second thing that I'd like to maybe try is that the actual uh, design pattern in, is written in very simple C++, but we can use Java to rewrite that pattern in Java so that we can, bo can have both programming languages actually demonstrating the same pattern. So anyway, creational patterns overall uh, uh, overall allows, allow us to um, essentially uh, detach uh, any sort of conditions uh, related to creation of objects. And you can imagine in a complex system, uh, it's challenging to actually produce, manufacture objects in memory so that once they created and all and have all these connections, the structure actually becomes existent in memory. Uh, it becomes uh, sort of like a straightforward path to solve a problem. but. Part of the problem is actually creation of an object, uh, producing this object supply in a certain manner, and uh, there are multiple conditions and rules that could be related to when and how and under what conditions and what kinds of objects we want to create. So creation of objects is a significant challenge in any project. It's just that you will um, you will realize that uh, you need multiple objects, and the challenge is uh, okay. In what order do we construct them? Do we act? Can we construct these objects in independent order so that we really don't depend much on uh, on the uh, sequence of creation, or do we want to actually even 
uh, 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 give uh, some objects responsibility to create other objects so that they act as creators. Um, and uh, we need to analyze and be aware of what's beneficial, what's, 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 uh, what may be less beneficial to a certain situation. So that's why creational design patterns essentially analyze uh, typical uh, situations where you want to organize your software uh, by using uh, a design pattern as a prepackaged solution. It's not really copy and paste. Is just introduction of an idea that you can say, oh, that idea really kind of applies to my situation. So again, we will have to a uh, chance to revisit design patterns in a more, more formal way. I actually would like to jump on to abstract factory uh, uh, design pattern uh, and uh, introduce the software so that we can first uh, understand what it does. And then again, I would like to focus on the UML. Uh, 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 aspect of it. So uh, let's jump to Abstract Factory. And uh, right here, there is a separate documentation uh, page for this, uh, for this uh, particular illustration or demo project. And right here, what happens is that we're going to have, um, we're going to uh, take a look at an example at an example of um, a situation where we want to uh, create a maze, right? A maze is, the, is basically our problem domain, OK? And in the maze, right, uh, so it, it, I mean, it, it, it sort of like behaves like a game, right? Uh, although can be used in mapping and the construction and everywhere else, right? All kinds of simulations. So it has multiple applications. But perhaps the simplest way is that we would like to design a program that behaves like a maze and the user uh, can navigate through the maze. So the maze has to be constructed from components, right? Or from objects, right? Um, and these objects uh, perhaps could be uh, a room, right? Uh, uh, a room. Uh, there could be a door connecting to rooms. There could be a wall that makes up a room. And some rooms later on could behave such as hallways, right? A uh, hallway. Uh, um, uh, type of rooms, and uh, we can also consider being uh, being inside, outside, indoor, outdoor type of uh, situation. We can add some elevators or transponders that take uh, the visitor from one location to another location, and uh, we can have uh, you know special effects such as we can have doors locked, doors unlocked. We can have walls that are. Uh, you know that could explode. Uh, we could use bombs to 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 basically uh, uh, create explosions and uh, uh, and and do all kinds of special effects uh, that directly affect the structure and so forth. Right. So uh, so there's lots of things that uh, that uh, may be happening here, and so. It's interesting that perhaps we want all of this object supply, right? Rooms, doors, walls, and other types of things uh, to be somehow placed in a collection so that essentially we can quickly run through this collection and do things such as, I don't know, display, right? Display. Or we want to, uh, to actually th have things explode, right? Explode things. And uh, as we run through this list, we may decide to explode a certain wall, right? So, um, or we want to be able to uh, find a room and then uh, check all the doors available and quickly check whether, you know, if we have a key to, to, of some sort, we would like to find out if this key can unlock any of the locked doors or lock them. Uh, uh, in the opposite type of direction, so um, so the challenge that we would like to uh, uh, we would like to consider in this in this specific example uh, where we try to demonstrate this um, uh, object factory or what is it uh, formally uh, called uh, abstract factory, right? So it's an object factory which is an abstract factory. 
uh, in this uh, specific example. So we will analyze basically a process of creation of different types of objects, right? So first of all, we need to understand what makes this entire project demo uh, in terms of what classes exist there, how they are related, which UML will be really helpful. And then we'll realize that, oh, look, that we're also looking at the abstract factory design pattern, which gives us some benefits to how to uh, create object supply of, of all of this, right? So this is, this is an idea, and uh, there are multiple angles to look uh, at this uh, thing. So abstract factory design pattern. So once again, just, just a reminder, I went to the very bottom of our, um, uh, of our uh, homepage, uh, say S260, uh, wherever that is, uh, and I went, uh, went to the very bottom of it, uh, right? And, uh, and there, there was a link to design patterns. And if you jump on the lecture handout, right, so you'll see that there's a abstract factory set of slides that, that essentially talk about this demonstration. So again, my focus primarily is not right now on uh, the design pattern benefits. Uh, right now, I just would like to use it as an example of uh, software which I can sort of like reconstruct in the form of UML. That's my primary goal. Right, so uh, and there uh, there was a link to this uh, uh, to this abstract factory, uh, and there's a download uh, a, a download link a link which has a zip file with all the source uh, uh, that that is there. I'm actually going to download it. Actually, uh, going to go to uh, two sixty and uh, yes, this is a, 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 a C plus plus project. So this is where I'm going to download it. Okay, uh, and so once I download it, I will be able to essentially look at individual files and 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 see what's going on in there. Uh, in fact, I may try uh, actually. Uh, Create a project and uh, and try um, uh, looking at at this uh, from the project standpoint. Let me uh, uh, start some sort of compiler here, which I will use uh, an older version of Visual Studio right here. Just say file a new project. We'll quickly create a project for this demonstration. Um, <clears throat> you can do the same if you'd like to, to look at stuff, right? So uh, this will be Visual C++ type of project because that's, that's what we have. And um, I will just uh, simply try using empty project for this. Now, <clears throat> the location of my project will be, let me just find where this is on my drive. Uh, I think I went to projects. Uh, pro, uh, projects, let me see where I went. My projects and 260 and CXX uh, that represents C++, right? Uh, so <clears throat> let me um, uh, actually, why don't I uh, create my project right here? All right, so that's the location for me. Uh, and the name of the project will be Maze. Uh, a maze game or something like that, right? Uh, and I will just create my project. It will be an empty project with nothing in it. So it's still working on creation of it. Here's this maze game. Um, and what I would like to do is that I would like to actually create a, a separate uh, folder for all of my source, right? So all of my source will be located down there in this uh, in this level. So this is the location where I'm going to uh, store all of my source. And my source, of course, will come from this uh, just downloaded uh, zip file. I'll just say, you know, use your archive, archive or utility, whichever you want. I prefer to use um, uh, to use 7-zip uh, uh, in all of my work. So here it is, all, all, the, all of the, uh, uh, all of the uh, 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 source files are pretty much at the 
at the level of this abstract factory uh, subdirectory in this zip file. I will say extract and point it to my source. And uh, this way, uh, now I have a maze game project and source contains all of this, right? So uh, now I will just say uh, view solution explorer. Uh, and uh, perhaps I can now resize my screen a little bit and just go to my <clears throat> project source files. I pretty much need all of my source files here. So I'm just going to add uh, uh, existing items. And I know they're all on, uh, under source. I will sort, uh, sort it by type, right? And I, I know that what I need to include in the project is always a list of source files which are all of these CPP files, right? So everything that says CPP, I know I need to make it part of my project uh, so that I can compile you know, everything. So I'm just going to uh, use a shift key and uh, arrow and select multiple source files. So when I say add, all of them should appear under a list of source files right here. All right. So then we will uh, actually try building it, right? So why not? I'm just going to say, let's try to build the solution. And it says that there is a <clears throat> undefined or undeclared identifier. I kind of remember what this is. And I will just simply define this. Um, uh, boolean uh, as uh, as false, and we'll just see what uh, what that does. Uh, build this, and uh, so this builds fine. If I try running this, let me see what happens. Oh, it just stops. Uh, I mean, just the window just disappears. So obviously, I just need the pause. Uh, CSTD lib, right? Something like that. And before I exit over here, signaling success, um, I will just say uh, system shell call pause, which will be. Uh, portable across Windows and uh, uh, and Linux uh, and Unix. Um, so let's see what it does. Uh, so this is uh, now running and stops. And so I will modify my my uh, window to make it easier to work with. <clears throat> okay, so you can see that what happens here is that um, the maze was constructed with a set of rooms which were placed in some sort of object array which says when, when we try to display the information, it says that uh, the following objects exist in this uh, constructed maze. And there is a room. A room has a number. Uh, the, the room has apparently four sides, which in itself are stored in object array. And that object uh, array contains a wall, another wall, the door, and another wall. Okay, And actually, the door says that it connects room one and room two, which have the uh, specific uh, room numbers or IDs assigned to rooms. Uh, and it has the open uh, Boolean, apparently, which is true. The door is open. Um, and uh, it has some kind of mysterious map site, uh, which we will uh, skip right now. So you can see that uh, there is a room with uh, a room constructed as uh, with ID number one. And there is also a room constructed with ID number two. So apparently, there's a bunch of uh, objects uh, constructed and populated. And we were able to simply run through the structure and actually dump uh, the list of uh, objects which are 
uh, available uh, right now as object supply.